Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the September 14th edition of the From the Bench podcast. On this podcast, I'll be focusing on NFL Week 2 picks. I'm going to give you some over-unders. I'm going to give you some point spreads, who I would take, who I wouldn't take. And uh, through the magic of digital audio, I'm happy you're along on this edition of the From the Bench NFL Week 2 podcast. The picks are coming in. Welcome, everyone. My name is Mark Janish, founder of AccessMediaGlobal.com, the parent uh, website of this this podcast program. So welcome around the world, those of you listening in the United States, the United Kingdom, throughout Africa, throughout the bamboo curtain of Asia. Welcome to the program. Time to grab your favorite beverage. Time to grab your favorite snack food for the next 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to be positive. We're going to be positive about them some things. I know it might be dark in your world, but we're going to talk some NFL. So we're going to talk some impressions of week one. And boy, do I have some impressions of week one, but we'll get to that in just a moment. First of all, we want to go ahead and steer you to accessmediaglobal.com where we have for football aficionados, football addicts, American football addicts. I'm not talking soccer right now, ladies and gentlemen, but I will be later. Um, American football addicts, we have the Around the League podcast with uh, Chris Wesserling and crew. Um, That's posted. uh, They they do their podcast about two to three times a week. We're going to be posting some stuff, I think maybe tomorrow. In where they're concerned, but we do have some around the league podcasts uh, that have been posted. We also have Jimmy Trader uh, with an excellent interview of Fox Sports broadcaster Gus Johnson. Gus Johnson has done a lot of stuff. Um, he actually covered the NC2A uh, men's basketball tournament, uh, university basketball tournament for CBS for quite a number of years. And he has some uh, tremendous insights into Bill Rafferty, his sidekick. He talks about how he uh, started in the business, uh, where he got his first job and what was happening with that, and uh, how he likes college football and other things of this nature. So that's the Jimmy Trainer podcast, SI Media podcast. I post it weekly. It's one of my... Uh, favorites weekly features here at accessmediaglobal.com. I think you're going to enjoy it, so go ahead, take a look at that. And speaking of Gus Johnson, I'm not necessarily discussing college football, but you can go to my football page and you can see the Power 5 conferences, the NCAA links to the NCAA site. So all your all you uh, college football aficionados I haven't forgotten you. I just don't speak to it because why? Unfortunately, I don't have a staff of 15 writers and five researchers to get this done the way I'd like it to be done. But, you know, that's another story for another day. So uh, let's get right to the picks, okay? Uh, First of all, for those of you that are new to the podcast, uh, as far as the NFL games, I don't do Thursday games. I think Thursday games dilute the product. You're coming off a game, and then four days later, you got to turn around and be ready to play. Uh, well, last night proved my point. The uh, <clears throat> Cincinnati Bengals go to two and zero over the one and one Ravens, and uh, AJ AJ Green receiver had three uh, touchdowns, uh, and Cincinnati held on for a thirty four twenty three victory over the Ravens last night. If you saw that game. 34-23 was also their week one total against an anemic Indianapolis Colts team, despite the fact that Andrew Luck has returned. Um, so anyway, they could they started out really well, and then Baltimore attempted a comeback, and of course that didn't work out for Joe Flacco. Uh, I would expect to see Lamar Jackson sometime in the next few weeks, maybe by week number eight, just put it out there, folks. Joe Flacco not producing uh, as as he should for the uh, AFC North uh, Raiders. Okay, so Andy Dalton, um, who I described as a middle-of-the-road quarterback, 
uh, after last night's performance. He's improved to, I think it was like six and he's now like six and 14 in nationally televised games. And maybe, you know, Marvin Lewis has had the job for 16 years as head coach. And we know he's 0 and 7 in playoff games. That's his numbers. I mean, uh, you can't get around that, but he seems to be hanging on in Cle in uh, Cincinnati. So kudos to the Bengals for getting an early uh, up with a um, up with a in division victory and improving to two and zero. Oh. But to the picks, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, if you listen to the podcast, I. Uh, didn't uh, necessarily focus on the spread. I just basically give you my picks to win. But I was seven wins, seven losses, and a, a tie. So a, a tie statistically is like half of a win. But seven, seven, and one was my uh, first week. Didn't I was not happy with some losses that I accrued to. Um, as some of you were, I'm going to give you some over under issues and we're going to talk about uh, points and over unders and whether you should take the over or the under uh, as I go through these picks. The first pick, the Los Angeles Chargers. Everybody's darling to compete defensively in the AFC. Now, is it, is it too much to ask Anthony Lynn, the actual head coach of the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, could you get with your receivers and have a catching session? There was two, not one, but two touchdown for sure passes. I mean, there was no coverage from Carson, California to... to uh, to Cathedral Oaks Road in Goleta, California. That's how wide open a couple of those receivers were. And um, boy, uh, do they have some work to do. They got beaten in all three phases. Pat Mahomes um, has a major league arm as far as ability to throw the ball. But four touchdowns by the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, rookie quarterback did them in. And they totally misfired in their debut. They got talent. Joey Bosa will be not playing uh, in this case. But the good thing is the Chargers are facing Buffalo in a regionally televised game, 10 o'clock in the morning on CBS uh, networks in Los Angeles, or, I mean, throughout the country. Um, we have an over-under of 42.5, Chargers by 7. Take the Chargers and the over this is liable to be a blowout, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a blowout on the Chargers' favor, so I would expect them to go to one and one. But, you know, you never know. Things happen, and, uh, you know, Buffalo is still trying to get over four Super Bowl losses between um, uh, 1991 and, like, 1994. So, uh, so, you know, it's just a tough road in western New York. Um, it's, you know, it's early season. Not sure uh, if the Bills have the, the uh, personnel to beat the Chargers. Don't think they do. I go ahead and take the Chargers and the over at 42 and a half. The next game we're looking at, the New York Jets. This is one game I wanted to comment on. 16 of 21, 198 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception for rookie Sam Darnold, the fair-haired kid from Southern California. Sam Darnold, I mean, Sam Darnold was the beneficiary of five interceptions. Uh, tremendous job by the Jets against the hapless Detroit Lions. And um, the thing is here is that the Jets, the Jet fans, I know you've had it tough. You haven't had a good quarterback that's been over 500 since Chad Pennington. Now, I am I remember uh, Ken O'Brien, Richard Todd, and uh, Mark Sanchez led the uh, – 
led the uh, Jets to two, F- two AFC uh, championship appearances. He's now gone. Okay. But the newly minted um, Sam Darnold, he's still got some things to prove. I congratulate him for taking advantage of an unprepared or ill-prepared Matt Patricia Detroit Lion team. I don't know what was going on in Matt Patricia's brain, but he stood on the sidelines in week one. He looked like he was more more lost than a child getting lost at your local zoo. I swear to God. You know what? I'm. I mean, really. Come on now. Uh, he was looking like a raccoon staring at truck headlights with this. You know, the eyes and you freeze and you don't know what to do. I don't know what was going on with Matt Patricia, but he's going to need to get it together um, if Detroit is to have any chance. And I have to congratulate the Jets and um, Todd Bowles, coach, for doing an excellent job. Uh, So I have, as the Jets face a struggling Miami squad to score points, The Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets tangle in New York uh, this week. Early game, Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning, West Coast time. I've got the Jets winning. I've got the Chargers winning before that. And then, of course, uh, we're going to get to the Steelers and the Chiefs. Steelers at home. I don't know if that tie was a blip on the radar in Cleveland, although kudos to Cleveland for playing better but not winning the game. It's, you know, there's no there's no moral victories in football, I guess you could say. Uh, you hear that a lot. The Steelers uh, are going to be an over-under of 40, 50, uh, 4, I'm sorry, The Steelers are favored by four and a half. The over-under is 53. I go ahead and I take the under in this game. Uh, Also, the Jets favored by three. I do take the Jets. The over-under for the Jets and the uh, uh, Miami is 43 and a half. I go ahead and take the under in this game. Uh, Now back to the Steelers and the Jets. Uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, looked terrible in week one with like five tur- five turnovers in the rain. Uh, he doesn't seem motivated to do too much. He wasn't willing to help his understudy. Uh, recently, rookie draft choice, uh, Mason Rudolph, out of Oklahoma State. Uh, let's see. What else can I say? Big Ben is in a similar spot to Aaron Rodgers. We'll get to Aaron Rodgers in a moment. But... Uh, as far as an elbow injury, uh, the Steelers better hope he can play because I think the AFC North between the Ravens and the front-running Bengals, they're going to beat the you-know-what out of each other. They're going to beat the scuffing out of each other uh, in the division. I definitely look to the Steelers to win this game, uh, take 53 in the under, uh, and, you know, you can decide what you want to do on the points. The Steelers by four and a half. I take the under in this case. I believe the Steelers will take the game uh, at Heinz Field. The Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Texans favored by two. The over-under is 44 and a half. Uh, I probably go ahead and take the under in this game. The Texans are going to beat handily the Titans. I don't think the Titans um, have a grasp of um, what is going on as far as their identity goes. Uh, Deshaun Watson is great. Delaney Walker is out, and Blaine Gabbert um, will likely be in. Uh, The Titans are already in trouble. And with uh, Blaine Gabbert, I'm sorry, Uh, with the Titans, it just seems they don't have enough offensive firepower to get it done. So that's 10 a.m. Uh, in Tennessee, in Nashville, 10 o'clock in the morning, Houston with a win. Once again, 44.5 is the over-under. 
go ahead and take the over in this game and uh, the Texans. The Redskins and the Colts, happy to have Andrew Luck back. But, uh, you know, as usual, the reason that Andrew Luck um, has not been available for the past year and a half, the two seasons about, is because there's nobody around him. Uh, I think, in this case, Indian, Indianapolis and Washington. I go ahead and take the Redskins. Um, the over-under is 48. Go ahead and take the uh, under in this game. All right, take the under and the Redskins. The Falcons and the Panthers. Now, this, this, this week one mess that was the Panthers game against the Dallas Cowboys. 16 to 8. I mean, this was like the national game. So we ended up getting out getting it out here on the West Coast. It was a mess. And I predicted, I think, uh last podcast, I talked about Cam Newton uh basically throwing a lot of high balls, missing receivers, and all these things. That actually did occur. Very disappointed in the Carolina offense. However, they squeaked out a 16-8 win against the hapless Dallas Cowboys. Um, and we'll talk about the Cowboys shortly. Uh, I go ahead and I take the Falcons and Matt Ryan because they're at home. Uh, the over-under is 44 and a half. Go ahead and take the over in this game and take the Falcons. The Vikings and the Packers. Now, we all saw Sunday night at the NBC game in the United States. A tremendous effort by Aaron Rodgers. He was coming back uh, to throw three touchdowns after Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears had run out to a big lead. And, of course, 24 to 23 was the win. Aaron Rodgers is not in great shape with his knee. Uh, there's nothing that he said in a couple of interviews and nothing that Mike McCarthy said that's going to make me think that um, he's going to start, let alone play. And there's a reason uh, because of the vaunted Minnesota defense, which I think is uh, probably top 8 to 10 in the league, and because they played so well last year in their run to the uh, NFC Championship, they... um, You know, Mike Zimmer, I guess what I'm trying to say is here, Mike Zimmer, if you see a wounded Aaron Rodgers, I send the house. Mike Zimmer is that kind of player. He's a little bit of a uh, throwback to a different generation of player in the 70s and 80s and such, and he would go ahead and attack Green Bay at their weakest point, which right now is Aaron Rodgers. I would start Deshaun Kaiser. Uh, in this case, this game is off the board, uh, probably due to the injury, but Vegas is not even taking it, taking any bets on this game. I do definitely believe that the Vikings will win in Green Bay. It's going to be a great game, but I do believe the home fans will be going home disappointed. Uh, go ahead and take the Vikings and the win. All right, moving on. The Saints. And Ryan Fitzpatrick of Tampa Bay. They put on a show, 48-40 to victory for Ryan Fitzpatrick, accounting for 417 yards through the air and, like, four touchdowns, I believe. Uh, The over-under is 49. This is uh, Cleveland at New Orleans. Cleveland's going to get crushed. Um, They're they're not going to lose back-to-back games at home in the – Friendly confines of the um, Superdome in New Orleans. I mean, that's just not going to happen. I'm hoping, for New Orleans' sake, they find Drew Brees a defense. I said last week that I thought um, (coughs) New Orleans would be my dark horse to win the NFC with Alvin Kamara uh, amongst the crew there. Um, But uh, definitely, I go ahead and take the Saints over the Browns. It's not even going to be close. The over-under is 49. Go ahead and take the over. And the point spread is 9. So if you want to take the points, 
go ahead and do that, but I'm focusing on the over-under. Take the over and the 49 in that game. The world champion for the moment, Eagles, uh, favored by three. The over-under is 44, Philly at Tampa Bay. Now, there is no reason to expect that Ryan Fitzpatrick will come back with the same so-called Fitz magic that he performed. I don't know what was going on. He's had some great games in some other uniforms, but he's also under 500 as a starting QB. So, you know, he's going to return to his uh, form of mediocrity this week. Um, no way Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to uh, do as much damage to the Saints, uh, much damage uh, to the Eagles as he did uh, to Tampa Bay. Okay, so I think the Bucks are going to be coming back to earth in this game. The over-under is three. I'm sorry, the point spread is Eagles by three, and the over-under is 44. Go ahead and take the uh, over in this game. And the world champion Eagles should be improving to 2-0. Tampa Bay, 1-1. One one. The Rams and the Cardinals. The Rams are favored by 13. The over-under is 45. Cardinals have a 3-4 personnel playing a 4-3 defense. They didn't tackle well last week, and Sam Bradford is, well, Sam Bradford, which means he is uh, good in certain spots, and he's not so good in other spots. The Rams are just too much better, evidenced by the last quarter and a half against the Oakland Raiders. Did you see Todd Gurley uh, run? run, run through the last half of the third quarter and all of the fourth quarter. Uh, and I have to I have to say, where, where was Derek Carr? Derek Carr was accurate. Three interceptions, however, doomed him. And then uh, to top that off, in the post-game press conference, which I did post at accessmediaglobal.com, week one rap, recap for the Raiders, John Gruden has the unmitigated gall and stupidity. I don't know. First thing out of his mouth during the press conference, well, we didn't have much of a pass rush. Well, you just happened to pay, uh, happened to trade away your Khalil Mack pass rush. Um, and well, duh. Hello, John Gruden. John Gruden's ego is bigger than the Oakland Alameda Coliseum exponent of four people. His ego, not, not anything else. I mean, you can moan and groan about, whoa, uh, we didn't have the money, according to Mark Davis. We're getting a payment from the NFL in October. But when you don't even talk to Khalil Mack regarding selling him on Raider Nation, Raider History, and how he could be a part of that. And then you come out and you're a post-game presser, well, we didn't have a pass rush. Well, I wonder the hell why, John. Wake the hell up in Oakland. My God. You could see, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. You might see the Raiders do another 6-10, and 5-11. and 11. This team looks so inept through the last quarter and a half with Todd Gurley running it up the gut. And Jared Goff doing some nice things. Cooper Cup out of Eastern Washington University doing some nice things on Monday night. Come on, Oakland. Really? You need a pass rush now? You finally figured that out after you trade Khalil Mack? Come on, John. You're disingenuous, man. Stop lying to Oakland fans. Stop lying to the uh, citizens and uh, world citizens and United States citizens regarding the Oakland Raiders. And the fact of the matter is, he needs to come out and actually apologize to Raider fans for trading a once-in-a-generation franchise player, Khalil Mack. He's getting $10 million a year for 10 years. But you didn't have no money to pay uh, Khalil Mack. The lap's on you, John. And it's going to be, the lap's going to be on you for the next five years, the next 10 years, unless you get lucky. I mean, you're going to Vegas, 
but you better find a pass rush, and you better hope um, that your draft choices are good. But once again, you don't find many as good as Khalil Mack uh, once in a generation. You could have had him, but you didn't want to talk to him. So there's no wonder you didn't have a pass rush. I don't know what it is with some of these egoistic coaches. They think the the, the sporting public is stupid. We get it. You didn't want to pay them. Anyway, moving right along, before my blood pressure goes up about 35 points on the systolic and the, uh, <clears throat> and the diastolic here, um, let's move on. I've got the Rams uh, winning at Arizona. I think we're going to see Josh Rosen very soon, probably within week seven, week eight. I think uh, Josh Rosen is going to get some snaps at Sam Bradford. Uh, performs any worse than he's already performing, but it's not his fault. I mean, uh, he's had some serious injuries over the years, and he's lucky to be in the league as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the Rams take the Rams over Arizona uh, in Los Angeles, 1 p.m. Pacific time. And then uh, there's Jimmy Garoppolo next game. Jimmy Garoppolo facing Matthew Stafford. This is a home game for San Francisco. 49ers are favored by six. The over-under is 47 and a half. I'll go ahead and take the over because I think a lot of points are going to be scored. Uh, I would hope that Jimmy Garoppolo, now 7-1 and one as a starter, takes care of the football a little bit more. Three interceptions last week didn't help him against a tough Minnesota defense, which I've detailed earlier. Um, and as far as that goes, the Lions did not look prepared Monday. And Matthew Stafford was forcing balls in where he shouldn't need to and the tight windows and things of um, that nature. They do need to uh, figure out what they're going to be going, doing with their running game. Take Mike Shanahan at home, San Francisco, over Matt Patricia, an ill-prepared Matt Patricia. And we can talk a little bit later about the records of Romeo Cronell, Charlie Weiss, Josh McDaniel, the Bill Belichick coaching tree is not as prosperous as you would think. Um, Bill O'Brien probably gets a pass in that case. Uh, he has a great defense, but he hasn't had a lot of offense, but he's getting what he needs to, and hopefully Deshaun Watson will prove to be a tonic to that anemic offense in Houston. So, so yeah, uh, Josh McDaniel, Romeo Cronell, Oh, Eric Mangini, uh, and all these guys that are on the uh, Bill Belichick coaching tree, these guys have losing records. That lets me know that uh, Bill Belichick only showed them enough to serve his own purposes, okay? In other words, all these guys that have gone on to coach other teams don't have the fortitude, don't have the moxie, don't have what it takes inside of them to be good coaches. Maybe, just speculation here, not that I want to live on speculation, but is it possible that Josh McDaniel refusal of the Indiana jo of the Indianapolis job um has something to do with the fact that he didn't really feel comfortable after his debacle in Denver for two years, uh, <clears throat> uh, being a head coach because he really didn't have it. Maybe we need to look at it that way rather than him reneging, although that was stupid. Uh, you sign an agreement and then you back out. It's happened before with uh, Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick and so forth and so on. But, uh, yeah, all I'm saying is, the New England coaching tree is not something I'd want to be hiring uh, from as far as if I was looking for a coach and I was a general manager at that point. The Broncos and the aforementioned Raiders. Oakland's going to the Mile High City in Denver. Broncos favored by six. The over-under is 45 and a half. Now, um, they, did, they don't have a lot of talent. The Denver defense is down, but the offense is very, very good. 
under Case Keenum. Now, Case's only problem is he threw three interceptions against the uh, against the Seattle Seahawks, and the Seahawks made um, some great long plays. But once again, Denver prevailed on the road over Seattle, twenty-seven to twenty-four last week. Uh, I predicted Seattle would be seven and nine, um, and I would uh, think right now that uh, I have Denver in this game Sunday at one fifteen Pacific time. Um, so take the Broncos and the points. I would go ahead and take the over. Derek Carr really needs to get it together, and they need to find a running game in Oakland. And they need to find a defense, as I said earlier. Oh uh, my goodness! Could Oakland go six and ten or five and eleven? Unfortunately, they've started off in that direction. This might be the game of the day with Jalen Ramsey and the Jacksonville Jaguars facing Rob Bronkowski and the Patriots. The Patriots um, are going to be on the road. I think the defense for the Jaguars is going to show up. I think uh, if it was me, I probably would take the Jaguars and the over. Um, this is a pick em game right now as far as uh, things are considered by the betting aficionados to be generally even right now. So I would go ahead. I take the Jaguars at home, um, and hopefully uh, Jalen Ramsey will – uh, keep his mouth shut for at least a week and uh, stop talking about receivers, quarterbacks, who's great, who's not, and uh, we'll see. But I do expect the Jaguar defense to show up, and uh, they could eke out and I will eke out enough points to hand New England a loss at Jacksonville in this game. And the Sunday night game is going to be interesting. The Giants have dominated the Cowboys uh, in this circumstance. Cowboys are favored by three. The over-under is 42. Go ahead and take the over. I, I think that the Giants are going to prevail in this game. I don't expect Zach, uh, uh, excuse me, Dak Prescott to be great. I expect him to be the game manager that he is. And unless he can get the ball down, to, down the field to the Michael Gallops of the world, Minus the Jason Wittens now, who's in the booth for um, ESPN with Joe Tessitore. We'll have to see what happens. But I expect the Giants to win this game on Sunday night, nationally televised, NBC, uh, at Jerry World. The Giants over the Cowboys. And, boy, if the Cowboys go 0-2, uh, you're going to hear, if you've not already heard, uh, cries for Jason Garrett's job. And I also have to say <laughs> – Stephen Jones <laughs> made some truly uh, stupid, uninformed comments regarding Troy Aikman being an armchair quarterback. The guy has had, has a great career post football. He knows his football, and he only led Dallas to three titles. So when Dallas stops. Looking to their offensive line to be the anchor, and they actually find some receivers that haven't lost a step. Des Bryant type receivers, you got to replace their receiving core because Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. It was weird. The game that I saw, the 16 to 8. Um, Carolina win? Are you serious? 69 yards for Ezekiel Elliott. Jason Garrett and the Dallas Cowboys need to decide what they're going to do as far as their identity. They don't know if they're a passing team or running team, and they better find it quick because they're going to be done in this division very, very shortly if they don't get their act together. We'll see on Mon on Sunday night on the NBC networks in the United States, whether the uh, aforementioned Giants or Cowboys, uh, aforementioned Cowboys can even be competitive. I expect the Giants to win this game. Take the Giants and the over, over under 42, take the over, 
And even though the Cowboys are favored by three, I think the Giants are going to win this game. And finally, the Monday night game, the Bears are going to be playing the Seahawks. Matt Nagy uh, played a nice first half against Green Bay. But, uh, you know, as we all know, the um, games are 60 minutes instead of 30. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky might have some trouble from Frank Clark and the um, – Defensive line of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, if the Bears can run the ball, they have a shot. Also believe the Bears need to put some defensive pressure on Russell Wilson. Last week, Denver did the same, and Denver was successful. I believe, El I want to say, uh, um, <clears throat> is it Elvis Tumerville? Yeah, there was some excellent uh, defensive pressure put on uh, Russell Wilson by Denver last week. Listen to that game over uh, satellite radio. It was great. Um, so go ahead and uh, I've got actually Seattle winning this game. Uh, it's going to be close. The over-under is 43. I go ahead and I take the, uh, the under in this game uh, at 43. Seattle with a victory. So that should end the uh, NFL Week 2 pick portion of the podcast i want to say this just as a reminder we're going to get the mls uh, podcast the extra time podcast up in the next day or two we're also going to get richard deitch uh, podcast up from arts 19 regular weekly feature up we're going to also get the weekly uh buster only mlb uh podcast up throughout the whole week, so you can choose episodes you want to listen to. Go to accessmediaglobal.com, go into the search engine, type in Richard Deutsch, top, type in Buster Only, and you'll see any previous posts that you want to see. Uh, as far as that goes, that's how that works. You can always contact me on Twitter, Mark, at Access Media, um, and also the Contact Me page at accessmediaglobal.com. Uh, we, I am going to be coming back. Uh, we are now on Sunday. After Sunday's action, we will be two weeks away from the end of the regular season. I haven't forgotten baseball, just haven't done a focused podcast on it. But that's going to uh, change. So on Sunday night, uh, after the games are done for Sunday afternoon, which should be minus the night game, probably about 4.30, 5 o'clock. I'm going to put together a podcast specific to Major League Baseball. If you need any soccer information, go to the soccer page. I have the uh, La Liga. I have English Premier League. Um, I also uh, will post the podcast from the Total Soccer Show up there. So if I'm not talking about it, that doesn't mean it's not available. If you want to look at your favorite Power 5 conferences, or if you have a Division 2, II, Division 3 school, you can go to NCA.com. Go to my football site, football page, and it says Mark's Favorites. And all those sites are sites that I would recommend for all the sporting information that you need. I want to say I uh, am grateful and appreciative of your listenership. You can get this and any other podcast over Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and Libsyn. For AccessMediaGlobal.com and the From the Bench podcast September for September the 14th, 2018, I'm Mark Janish, wishing you a very, very pleasant day and a very, very great sports weekend. For now, I'm signing off. I'm Mark Janish, your host. Go to accessmediaglobal.com for further and more in-depth in information. Thanks for listening, and thank you for visiting accessmediaglobal.com. Good night, everyone.